John Howard, file it in. Thanks a lot. They have one at Capital Comics. Oh, that's great. No, it's not. I hate that place. The guy who owns it is a jerk. It's always making me feel bad about myself. Oh, that's terrible. What's your dress? <laughs> you know, why don't I just take you there? That way I can make sure he doesn't rip you off. Oh, thanks, but I don't want you to close out. I mean, won't you lose business? <laughs> Sorry, that was mean. <laughs> Emily, these are my good friends, Howard and Bernadette. Guys, this is Emily. Nice to meet you. Hi. Uh -huh. Have we met before? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think so. You sure? You look familiar. Well, you sure don't. I mean, you, I know. You, I know. <laughs> you, a, a total stranger. <laughs> Even if you had yummy candy, I would not get in your van. <laughs> on Green Street? That must be it. Since when do you go to spin class? Wow, now who doesn't listen? Yep. Hey, uh, and maybe this time you don't try and talk sports with the guys. <laughs> Some sports bar. It's like they never even heard of Quidditch. <laughs> you really have to go? Oh, come on. Every time we're about to hang out with my friends, you don't want to. It's like it's too loud, or the bathroom's too dirty, or they put a chicken wing in my ear. I mean... <laughs> well, you're, you're right. Let's just go. Hey, what's going on with you? Nothing, I'm fine. All right, hang on. Is this still about your mom's book? No, not everything is about my mom. Because if you're still upset about that, we don't have to go. Except this is totally about my mom. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I never should have read that book. You know what? You want to just get dinner and watch the game here? That sounds nice. OK. Mm. Or you know, we could get takeout and watch the Blu-ray extended version of the Hobbit movie with commentary track. <laughs> On account of how sad I am about my mom. <laughs> Dr. Lorvis, what are you doing here? Uh, well, actually, I came to see you. Really? Why? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, someone was being awfully flirty while not wearing their engagement ring, causing another someone to show up here, thinking the first someone might be available. Oh, God, don't make it so hard on her. Look, the first someone is the deceitful you. The second someone is the delightful Dr. Lorvis. Oh, this is very embarrassing. Uh, Dr. Lorvis, I am so sorry. I did not mean to lead you on. You touched my arm for two Mississippis. <laughs> That's why you were mumbling Mississippi. <laughs> Can we talk in private? Please, yes. I'll be right back. When, so what other celebrity genitalia have you handled? So, uh, what's the deal? You take off your ring when you go to work? What? No, no. I just put it on the other hand and turn it around. Keep that hand in my pocket. Why? What, what do you mean, why? Look, I make more sales if these doctors think I'm single. I did the same kind of thing as a waitress. The real question is, what is he doing in your apartment? Uh, he was upset, so Sheldon invited him in for a hot beverage. You were okay with that? No, I got upset. Sheldon made me a beverage, too. Okay, he just showed up at my door. Don't you think that's a little weird? A little, but I, like, he's basically harmless. He's actually kind of a nice guy. Okay, whatever. Look, my company does not allow me to socialize with doctors outside of work. You've got to get rid of him. Why am I the one that has to get rid of him? I can't do it. He's my best client. All right, I'll get rid of him, but you owe me one. Hey, we're going to Oliver's house to see his collection. You want to go with us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you owe me. Hey, what are you working on? Um, I'm thinking about how one could use the fact that a rapidly rotating mirror turns virtual photons into real ones as a method of observing dark energy. It's a pretty cool idea. 
Yeah, it's great you're here. I'd love to get an engineer's opinion. Sure. <laughs> this chair is squeaky. <laughs> now, do I fix it or get a new one? <laughs> Well, Sheldon, it took me all morning, but I found the owner of the video store, and I am happy to report that he died peacefully in his sleep, drunk at the bottom of a pool. <laughs> anyway, there is no one to return the DVD to, so this issue is resolved. <sighs> and I'd just like to point out that even though the sweater was uncomfortable, I didn't use it as an excuse to antagonize everyone around me. You know, you could read First, the video store owner's next of kin. Or it's resolved. <laughs> and that next of kin thing sounds pretty good. I believe this is yours. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for keeping me company. Oh, I'm happy, too. I think getting out of the apartment will do you good. So, where are we headed? Well, if it's okay with you, I'd like to go to Temple. Buddy, trust me, you don't want to convert to Judaism. I mean, I know I make it look cool, but it's not all briskets and dreidels. I meant a Hindu temple. Oh, okay. It's not like Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, right? Some bald guy with horns isn't going to rip my heart out. Dude, that movie's an imperialist fantasy that makes the followers of a beautiful and peaceful religion look like a bunch of bloodthirsty barbarians. You love that movie. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> and I'm surprised to see you suddenly get religious. Why? Well, because I've known you for 10 years and you've never gone to temple. You never talked about believing. God. But, and last Diwali, I watched you eat two pounds of sacred cow at a Brazilian steakhouse. Religion is a very personal thing. I do go to temple, I just, I don't talk about it. Yeah, but you're a scientist. So? So as a scientist, you believe the way to understand the universe is through facts and evidence, and now you're counting on some blue chick with a hundred arms to help you? That is so offensive. Does everything you know about Hinduism come from Indiana Jones? No, there's also a poo. The Simpsons. Well, lots of scientists believe in God. Okay, Newton, uh, Faraday, pa Pascal, all were believers. Even Einstein was famous for attacking quantum theory on the grounds that God does not play dice with the universe. Well, of course he believed in God. He slept with Marilyn Monroe. Actually, there's no proof of that. But you believe in your religion, I'll believe in mine. <laughs> Going. Oh, it turns out Amy's beloved Pride and Prejudice is a flawless masterpiece. <laughs> He's got too much pride, she's got too much prejudice, it just works. So you're looking to ruin something for her in the funny pages? Amy has a fondness for the comic strip Marmaduke. <laughs> and? And I think I've got it. You consider. A family possesses a dog that is so large and poorly. Disciplined, he causes nothing but problems. Why do they keep him? Maybe they fell in love with him as a puppy and didn't know how big he was gonna be. Of course. <laughs> you know, why couldn't she just like Ziggy, you know? That thing's riddled with plot holes. Sorry, buddy. Oh, I think she's a fan of Garfield as well. <laughs> oh, darn it, now so am I. I'll see you later. I gotta go watch a stupid football game with Penny. You, wait, hang on. You've spent time with Amy. Can you think of anything she's fond of that has a bunch of flaws she hasn't noticed? I gotta go. All right. We've defeated the first challenge. Now we must steel ourselves to face the monster who defends the gate. I'm trying to get past a security guard, not rescue Zelda. I think what really needs to be rescued is your sense of whimsy, but one quest at a time. So what's the plan? You know, I'm just going to be honest with the guy. Honesty will never get us in. Well, what's your plan? All right. 
my plan is predicated on the assumption that they have a nurse's office and your willingness to be lightly stabbed. <laughs> Who are you here to see? I, I, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Oh, you are killing me. <laughs> we don't have an appointment. We're, we're just fans of Mr. Lucas's work. I thought we'd take a shot and see if we could get in and look around. Sorry, guys, we get this a lot. Can't let you in. What if I told you that I was the voice of Yoda? <laughs> a recording session I must attend. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't listen to him. We're, we're actually physicists. We're giving a lecture at Berkeley later today. We just we had some time to kill. Hey, listen, you seem like decent guys. I can't let you in. But I got some hats and T-shirts I can give you. Thank you so much. See? Maybe honesty is the best, but what are you doing? Shedding the yoke of my oppressors, you blind, sad little man. <laughs> Don't move. Code AA-23. AA-23. Copy. I can see the ranch, Leonard. Oh, it's rustic. It's lovely. I take a picture, but people are chasing me. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. They have tasers. They, they wouldn't dare use... Ah! The more I told him about my lab, the pissier he got. You know what he said to me? He said, I hope all your correlations turn out to be specious. Is that at your face? woman, you should be able to brag about your accomplishments once in a while. Well, so should you. I mean, the guys are never shy about bragging. Tell me about it. How he texts me every time his dog levels up in Warcraft. <laughs> has he ever called you to tell you he found three peanuts in one shell? Because Sheldon has. We should be able to do that, too. I guess we can brag to each other. It's a great idea. Damn right it is. I came up with it. <laughs> That felt good. <laughs> you know, there's so much money in pharmaceuticals, we don't even wash out our test tubes. We just throw them out and get new ones. I just got a brand new state-of-the-art fMRI machine. Oh, those things are so expensive. I know. Sometimes I just lie down in there and take a nap. <laughs> it's like a million-dollar bunk bed. <laughs> At the office, I have two assistants. I don't even know their names. I just call them Thing One and Thing Two. That's great. I, I don't have assistants. I guess that's one of the benefits of being in the private sector. That and all the money I make. Yeah, you've got that. I've got my integrity. Hard to say which is better without making you feel bad. She made me do all her chores. And it wasn't even her idea. She stole it from Tom Sawyer. You know what? This is crazy. Howard and Amy are working together. Get over it. Leonard, what are you doing? Knowing when to say when. This is not a big deal. It is a big deal. Howard's getting Amy used to laughing and listening to music. What if she expect that madness at home? You know, that is a good point. I'm really proud of the way you're able to express your feelings. Thank you. I'm just so angry. You know, everyone gets angry. Even mommies and daddies. You can't think this is the right time to validate his behavior. Okay, what about presenting a united front? What about you coddling him and he's never gonna learn? Look, you sound frustrated, and I'm really proud of the way you're able to state your opinion. Thank you. What? No, no! <laughs> Don't use that book on me! Boy, what book? Penny's been using one of Bernard's parenting books on you. What? So has he. What makes you think you can treat me like a child? Your shampoo comes in a big bird bottle. That's because the adult shampoo burns my man eyes. I can't believe you haven't seen Avatar yet. What is wrong with you? Penny and I just started dating, and, you know, I don't like big crowds. Because you're afraid Penny will leave you for someone in them? Terrified. <laughs> yes, instead of going out, they just stay home and have constant coitus. Well, I didn't want to say it, but I, I, I do like to hear it. <laughs> yes, Ma, I'll be home for dinner. Well, I'm not ruining my appetite with candy. 
Oh, right up on brisket? <laughs> Be home at six. Then maybe we should double date. I'll bring Penny and you can bring your mom. I'll make your jokes, but my date started a savings account for me. Did yours? Hey, guys. Hey. Oh, Stuart, good. I was wondering, will you be accepting Bitcoin? Well, I don't know what that is, but it's got coin in it, and my cash register doesn't, so yeah. Wait, what's Bitcoin? It's a new online currency that's been developed. Uh, it's just like actual money, except you can't see it, hold it, or spend it on anything. Sounds like the kind of money I'm familiar with. If it's not tangible, how do you know it's not just going to vanish tomorrow? Really? You're dating Penny and you're going to poke at something that could vanish tomorrow? <laughs> I'll buy some Bitcoin. I just came into a little extra money when my dad raised my allowance. You don't have to buy Bitcoin. You can mine it. Mine it? Like mining gold? Yeah, sort of. There's a limited amount, and we find it not by tunneling into the earth, but by using a computer to solve complex mathematical problems. So let me get this straight. We have to write an elaborate program in order to find a fake coin that we can't spend on anything? Yes. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Staying up late, writing code, and sounds like a party. Hey, Stuart, you want to mine some Bitcoin with us? We'll write the program, you bring the snacks? Too rich for my blood. <laughs> All right, so just the four of us. Before we begin, this may have some unprecedented tax implications. In fact, we should start early, because we are going to be on the phone with the IRS for hours. <gasps> they may else just get goosebumps? <laughs> Great, so just the three of us. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did it without you. And do you remember what happened next? Your mom called my mom and we were being mean. And after that, <laughs> you said that someday we'd regret this. And do you know what today is? The day we found out we're rich and none of it is yours? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right, up top. Wow. A scavenger hunt. That's exciting. I had a bit of a scavenger hunt myself last night. I was trying to find the remote. I looked under one of the cushions wasn't there. And then I lifted the cushion a little higher. Bingo. Riveting. So do you know what it is? Of course I know what it is. It's a silicon dioxide crystal, otherwise known as quartz. Are you sure? Am I sure? Is basalt a mafic extrusive igneous rock formed by the rapid cooling of magnesium and iron-rich lava? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so it's quartz. That's got to mean something. What do we know about quartz? I'll Google it. Or you could ask me, the geologist who won the MacArthur Genius Grant. Got it. <laughs> quartz, from the German quartz, which sounds the same, but is spelled without a T. Interesting. No T. What is not T? Coffee. The coffee shop where we first met. All right, let's go. <laughs> Sorry. I think I just had an adrenaline rush from having visitors. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time a charity sent me a nickel. Really? That's going to be our whole life, huh? If my father's any guide around 50, I start to lose my hearing and get two new jokes. <laughs> hey, hey, I brought Chinese. Oh, it's a nice surprise. What's the occasion? Please, I don't need a reason to bring food to my friends. But you have one, don't you? Yeah, I need your help. <laughs> All right, lay it on us. So, I folded, and I told Howard he could be a part of my planetarium show. And now I'm worried he's just going to make the whole thing about himself. So just tell him you changed your mind. You don't want him to do it. No, no. Then he's going to think I'm too insecure to share the spotlight with him. And he'd be right. <laughs> Come on, I came here for your support. Well, then you just walked up three flights of stairs for nothing. Wait, don't you mean four flights? No, it's actually three. But, but we're on the fourth floor. I mean, you have the lobby, first floor, second, third, fourth. And the lobby's the first floor, so lobby, second, third, fourth. That does not seem right. Hello! <laughs> Sorry, Roger, who cares if Howard tries to steal the show, all right? You're great at what you do. Just be the bigger man. And if it makes you feel better, Penny and I will come so you'll have a couple of friendly faces in the audience. Thank you. That would be nice. Can you just... Sorry, give me a minute. <laughs> hey, Josh, 
if I had a nickel for every time a charity sent me a nickel. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Three, right? Just shut up. <laughs> Hi. Can I do anything? No. I could make you some tea. I, I could sing soft kitty. I don't understand how you're not more upset by this. This is your paper, too. I am upset, Sheldon. I'm just trying to hold it together for you. Like when that goose wouldn't leave us alone at brunch. That thing scared you too? Of course it did. I was wearing a down jacket. Well, I don't need you to pretend to be okay for me. If anything, that makes it worse. Fine. I'm not okay. We came up with this idea at our wedding. We poured months of our lives into it. I thought we were changing the course of science and now it's all gone. I'm devastated. I was wrong. That makes it worse. Go back to being happy. <laughs> Come on. I know you're there, and I know you know it's me. <sighs> you're just making this harder. Look, you were right. I was doing this for the wrong reasons. You deserve to marry someone who knows how amazing you are and who proposes because he doesn't want to spend a single day without you. Not, not because he wants to catch up to his friends. Thank you. And I want you to know, I think I could be that man. Raj, I'm not going to marry you. I'm not asking you to. Then why are you here? Because I like you, okay? I like you. I, I, I like you enough to start this relationship at the beginning, not in the middle. So. Will you go out on a date with me? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I warn you, I just got out of a weird relationship and I might complain about my ex a lot. Maybe he's being weird because he doesn't know how to ask for his ring back. 